Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. And today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with you. Think of a scene from any movie in which the protagonist is running away from pursuit. But in the last seconds, when he is already safe, the villain's foot stops the closing door and the protagonist turns into a vulnerable victim. A young woman's morning began like this scene. She found herself trapped. We all know that in a state, law must always prevail. Not religion, not tradition, but the defense of human rights and freedom. However, some attitudes formed many years ago and stereotypes from childhood imposed by society affect the woman and under the influence of unspoken rules, she continues to live with a tyrant and tolerates violence. Today, our reality is such that even in the modern world, these attitudes are still relevant and continue to change people's lives. Today, we will move to Central Asia, namely to Kyrgyzstan, and look at the customs and lives of people of the state with the oldest history. Kyrgyzstan is a country rich in natural beauty. After all, three quarters of the country are mountains. Almost all of its territory is located within two mountain systems. The overwhelming majority of believers in Kyrgyzstan are Muslims. There are Christians, Orthodox, Catholics, and various Protestant movements. At the same time, Kyrgyzstan is a secular state. It is a state with a system where religion is separated from state power and which is regulated on the basis of civil rather than religious norms. The country's authorities punish members of the clergy for performing religious rituals that contradict the laws of the republic. But in the case of one fragile young woman who begged for help from the state and asked for protection, the authorities showed complete indifference. Asel Nogobaeva was born in 1986 in the city of Tokmok, Chue Oblast, Kyrgyzstan. After finishing school, the girl finished hairdressing courses and moved to Bishkek to find a job in a salon. It is easy to get lost in a large city, but sometimes it is much easier to meet people there. One day, Azamat Estebesov came to the hairdresser's shop where Asel worked to get a new haircut. He liked the pretty slender girl very much, and he invited her for a cup of fragrant coffee. The meeting became fateful for both of them. After all, Azamat also liked Asel very much. He seemed to be a simple, attentive man who was brought up in a prosperous family and was very hardworking. Asel's family approved of her daughter's choice because Azamat was very religious and honored Muslim traditions. Asel's parents did not see the disadvantages of the groom and with a calm heart blessed the marriage. At the age of 19, Asel married her beloved Azamat. Soon the firstborn child was born in the young family. A boy. It would seem that every man dreams of an heir, of someone who will continue the family. But in our story, the joy of fatherhood as if a genie from a jug caused the lowly and cruel demons of Azamat. So, on an ordinary evening, a simple family story turned into a real drama, which provoked a whole series of sad events. Asel and Azamat were bathing their son, the inexperienced father accidentally poured too much water on the child. He shook with fright and cried a lot. Asel reacted rudely and shouted at her husband. Azamat did not hesitate to hit her in the face in response. That same evening, Asil and the child went to her mother's house. Azamat repented and asked for forgiveness. He begged and said that this would never happen again. It is worth noting that the Kyrgyz mentality is very different from other mentalities. From childhood, girls are taught patience. A husband should be alone for the rest of his life because divorce is not welcomed, although it is not forbidden. And the Muslim religion plays an important role in creating and preserving a family by any means. Knowing the traditions and customs of the Turkic family, Asel, who herself grew up without a father, did not want her son to repeat her fate. The girl believed that Azamat raised his hand for the first and last time, and they would be able to continue living happily. A seal came back, but she was mistaken. A year later, the family returned from Bishkek to her native Tokmok to live near her parents. The return was joyful because Asel was expecting her second child. Asel was walking with her son on the playground near her home and met several classmates. They said hello and had a nice conversation. However, returning home from the walk, Asel again received a strong blow to the face. The blow was so strong that she fell and slipped on the linoleum. Unfortunately, this blow and fall triggered a miscarriage. After moving to Tokmok, Azamat became Asel's shadow. 
He stealthily followed her on the street. He was constantly looking for a reason for new conflicts. The man got a taste for it and could no longer refrain from beating her. Only his outer shell remained of the kind and attentive Azamat, although Asel had changed because his gaze was filled with anger and hatred. Asil has resigned herself to living under total control for the sake of her children. After all, she had another son again. The beatings did not stop for years. Asil's mother, knowing about her daughter's family drama, could not stand it and took her to her home. But the man did not stop. He came again and again for his family and begged for forgiveness, promising that this would not happen again. Tradition intervened again because in Kyrgyzstan, a son must grow up with his father. Such are the rules. Asil ended up going back five times. Life became a nightmare for Asil and she was tired of enduring it. After each day of painful beatings, she went to the police in the hope of getting help. But there is no criminal sentence for domestic violence in Kyrgyzstan. The maximum that was applied to Azamat was three days in the isolation center. Then he came back again, and this nightmare continued over and over again for six years. Azamat did not even want to hear about divorce. He threatened that if his wife filed for divorce, he would find her, the children and her family, and kill them all. During the period of the worst beatings, Asil's family took her to Italy. In Italy, Asil had big plans. She settled in with her brother, who helped her find a job. She worked three jobs, a nurse, a cleaner, and she walked dogs. The woman worked without weekends to save money for an apartment, to become financially independent, and to leave her tyrant husband. After three and a half years, she had already saved enough money to buy an apartment and open a mini-business. During the years in Italy, Asil saw a lot of new things. She communicated with interesting people, and gradually her moral state recovered. But her maternal heart ached for her children. After all, she had to leave them for long three years for the sake that they had a bright future ahead of them. The woman knew that the father never beat the children and did not show aggression towards them, so she was calm about it. But when she returned from Italy, a bleak picture awaited her. The children were living in terrible conditions. In one small room they slept, ate, played, and even went to the bathroom. The children did not go to school or for walks. They didn't eat well. And again, tradition. Azamat raised real Turkic men and created truly harsh conditions for their existence. Instead of school, they attended a madrasa, a Muslim religious and educational institution where they learn religion and how to read the Quran. Asel took the children. Azamat did not mind. It would seem that she was saved from the cruel captivity, but Azamat began to pursue his Asael again. He called and offered to meet her. Asael was categorical and made it clear that in case of harassment she would file a police report. But this did not stop him. In the evening, Asael went to the store to get some dishwashing detergent. The store was very close by. On her way, she met Azamat, who was following her again. He grabbed her and threatened her with a knife and took her to a dark, remote place. There, right on the street, he brutally beat Asil and took advantage of her. The strange sounds were noticed by passers-by who called the police. On September 1st, 2022, Asel wrote a statement to the police on her ex-husband about rape. He was detained and a criminal case was opened. Asel's family was sure that he would go to trial and the torment for all of them would end. But no. Azamat's family became active and could not accept that their son was a tyrant. Azamat's mother and sisters repeatedly begged Asel to withdraw the application. Another strange tradition. A woman in Kyrgyzstan cannot report her husband because it is a great shame. To beat, humiliate, and rape a woman is not shameful. Azamat's relatives discouraged Asel as much as they could. By deception, they succeeded. Asel took back the application in exchange for Azamat's application for relinquishment of parental rights but he is still officially their father. The Sokoluk District Court dismissed the case because of the victim's counter-application and reconciliation of the parties. After being released, Azamat started a new wave of harassment and threats. He wrote daily threatening messages to a seal, changed phone numbers to relentlessly continue his pressure. He openly said in voice messages that if he caught a seal, he would kill her. He waited for her in the driveway. He waited for her at work. He followed her everywhere. For three months, Asil's relatives took turns living with her and her children. 
protecting her from Azamat's attacks. But this did not save the woman from the second violence. On January 31st, 2023, the woman went to the police again and reported that her ex-husband had again taken advantage of her by using force. A criminal case was also opened and the suspect was detained. After the investigation, the materials were sent to the court. The family was waiting for the decision and expected a real term of at least five years. On the day when the trial was to take place, the judge and two prosecutors invited Asel to a separate office. Azamat was there. In front of her eyes, they took off his handcuffs, informing him that they applied three years of probation instead of five years of imprisonment. In fact, he remained free. The court considered such a decision appropriate because Azamat has an elderly mother with a disability and two children from his marriage to the victim. Let me clarify that probation is a set of measures applied to convicted persons. The purpose of probation is to correct behavior and prevent the commission of new crimes. A seal was crying. She felt herself driven into the darkest corner from which there was no escape. Despair and fear once again confidently settled in the woman's life. But Asel did not wait for new attacks. She no longer believed anyone and did not listen to Azamat's relatives. Asil took down all the beatings. She hired a lawyer and filed an appeal with the Chui Regional Court. The lawyers provided the court with all the threats in the messages, all the voice messages, and this time, the case went to court. But a series of different events constantly postponed the hearing, bringing closer the worst day of a seal. First, the lawyer fell ill and the trial was postponed for a month. The second and third hearings were also postponed for inexplicable reasons. At the fourth hearing, Asil begged not to postpone the hearing any longer because she was afraid not of beatings, but of death. Azamat continued to walk around freely and make attempts on Asil's life. On the eve of the meeting, he sent her a photo of a black backpack with a knife and a rope, with the caption, I am ready to meet you, at the bottom. But due to Azamat's refusal of the state lawyer and the involvement of a private lawyer in the case, the case was again postponed indefinitely. With such indifference of justice and law enforcement agencies, Asil simply had no chance to save herself. September 20th, 2023 began as usual. At 6.30 a.m., Asil woke up her children. They had breakfast together, and the caring mother accompanied her eldest son to school, wishing him a good day. Asil was about to leave the house too, so she didn't close the door, finishing getting ready. She brushed her hair as the front door suddenly opened. Azamat came in very quickly and very aggressively. The woman did not have time to react and close herself in the bathroom. He immediately hit her twice on the head, after which Asel fell into a stupor of incomprehension about what was happening. After the blows on her head, the pervert grabbed her by the throat and started strangling her. Asil lost consciousness, nothing further. Asel lay unconscious. Sometimes she heard Azamat's voice, and it seemed to her that everything that was happening was a terrible dream. But the strong crying of her son brought her back to reality. A seal realized that she was awake. The boy covered himself with a blanket and crying repeated, Daddy, don't do it. But his father ordered to keep silent. Otherwise, he would slaughter him too. Asil did not remember how from the bathroom, where she tried to hide, she found herself in the kitchen. He threw the unfortunate woman to the floor like an unnecessary thing, then picked her up again and continued to abuse her. In a moment, the pervert had lifted a seal up again and leaned her against the wall and was stabbing her face and neck with a clerical knife in cold blood. The next time Asil regained consciousness, she looked around and saw that everything was covered in blood, but she didn't realize what was happening. She had lost a lot of blood and her throat was dry. She kept asking for a drink. Her once beloved husband brought her a bucket of rags and in it was water mixed with blood. The giver had gotten so into the taste of blood that he started picking out a knife. He went through all the kitchen knives and tried them on, choosing the one that would reach a seal's heart. But suddenly the door opened and police officers entered the house. It turned out that a neighbor from downstairs heard the screams and knowing about the difficult situation of Asil and her ex-husband called the police, which saved her life by stopping the horrible torture. Azamat Estebesov resisted and attacked the officers with a knife, 
In such turmoil, no one realized what had happened. The whole apartment was drenched in blood. Azamat started cutting Asal in the bathroom, then dragged her to the kitchen through the hallway. He cut off his ex-wife's nose and ears and inflicted multiple wounds on her face and neck. He cut her throat, slashed her face, and beat her very badly. The district police officers arrived and called an ambulance. After assessing Asel's appearance, they began to look for the cut organs in a hurry, but they were nowhere to be found. Would you be surprised to know where they found the woman's ears and nose? In the monster's pocket. In pursuit of lost time, the police officers took Asel by their car to the 4th City Hospital in Bishkek. But there they did not provide her with first aid, explaining that according to her propiska, she did not belong to their hospital. Not only the doctors did not provide the victim with first aid, but they did not even stop the bleeding. Only in the second hospital, she received first aid and stopped bleeding. She was then sent to the National Hospital, where she was operated on for nine hours. Six doctors worked meticulously to restore Asel's face. The found amputated organs were carefully delivered by the district police officers. The doctors meticulously collected everything as the earlobes and nerve nodes were completely severed. Azamat did it with a special knife. It was very delicate work. The nose was also completely cut off. In the hospital, Asel did not regain consciousness for a long time. She miraculously survived. Psychologists warned that recovery would be long and it would be very dangerous. The young, beautiful woman was disfigured. A criminal case under the article causing grave harm to health of the criminal code of the Kyrgyz Republic was initiated on the fact of the attack. The police detained the suspect in the commission of the crime. He was sent to a pre-trial detention center. On September 27, 2023, the sentence against Azamat Estebesov was changed to eight years of imprisonment. By presidential decree, nine judges were dismissed from their posts. Among them is the judge of Sokoluk District Court of Choi Region Kielbek Toktomamatov, who released the man under probation supervision. The decree of the head of state says that Toktomamatov was dismissed in connection with the violation of the requirements of impeccable behavior of a judge. In addition to him, Sadir Japarov, by decree of November 1st, at the suggestion of the Council of Judges, prematurely terminated the powers of a number of judges who in one way or another violated the requirements of impeccability. Six investigators were involved in further investigation of the incident. They brought up all the previous cases of Azamat Estebesov and studied them again. They took into account all the facts they found, and on them in the new indictment case, there were already 11 articles. At the end of December 2023, all investigative activities were completed, and on January 9, 2024, the first court hearings began. Azamat Estebesov did not admit guilt on any of the 11 episodes charged against him. He avoided answering the judge's questions in every possible way, and in some cases stated that he was possessed by a demon, so he could not speak. He behaved aggressively towards the witnesses, because of which the trial was postponed. On January 26, 2024, the final closed court session was held. Judge Talaikul Kadirkulova, taking into account all the details of such a complex case, sentenced Azamat Estebesov to 20 years of imprisonment without the right to apply probation. He must also pay 2 million sums to his ex-wife and a fine of 80,000 sums to the state. The judge decided to count one day spent in pre-trial detention center for two. In spring, the defendant filed an appeal, but the sentence of 20 years imprisonment remained unchanged. Asel Nogoybaeva noted that she would go further and demand that the former spouse be sentenced to life imprisonment and all those involved in encouraging his actions be publicly removed from office and punished. Let this be an example to everyone. I want no woman in Kyrgyzstan to endure the pain that I and my family are carrying. Thank you all who do not stand by, the victim concluded. Asel Nogoybaeva's family and activists ask that her ex-husband be given a life sentence. After all, despite the imprisonment, Azamat continued to text threats to Asel with a warning that he would still go out and find her. The case of Asel Nogoybaeva, about the powerlessness of a woman before the law of the country, and how a once-loved and loving person turns into a cold-blooded monster in an instant, 
has finally come to its conclusion under the law. This case caused a wide public resonance throughout Kyrgyzstan. Asil's sister, Diana Yelkin, appealed to MPs to pass a law on domestic violence. She said that if the MPs do not pass a law on domestic violence, she will make them look at Asil's face without bandages and think what one wrong decision is worth. Asil's sister published a petition asking for a life sentence without parole for her sister's ex-husband. She recalled that her sister divorced her husband five years ago because of beatings and inadequate behavior of her spouse. But he did not leave her alone even after the divorce, stalking, beating, and abusing her. Azamat Estebesov is a dangerous person for society. People like him should not live free. They are obsessive and manic people. People like him should be behind bars. We ask for a life sentence for this monster. He has already killed a seal morally. He mutilated her face in front of her young son. People like him should be sentenced for life without the right to parole. She appeals in the petition. It doesn't matter what country it happened in. Family violence often takes monstrous forms. The topic of domestic violence should unite all women of the world. And we should not forget that religion is not an indicator that a person is adequate. Now Asil has a new life. Her new identity brings her great suffering. Despite the fact that Asil's wounds are gradually healing, full recovery of hearing and breathing functions will be long. In her interview, Asil told how she saw her face for the first time after the tragedy. There were no mirrors in my room, since I was not allowed to look at myself. It was a day off. My doctors were not there along with the doctor on duty, so I went to the first floor for dressing. I had my bandages removed and there was a metal operating lamp. The doctor on duty had not put it away. I saw myself in the reflection. I'm afraid of myself. I can't look at myself in the mirror. I could already see my ears. From the shock, I lost consciousness. Two weeks later, Asil saw her face completely. Her brother gave her a dressing at home. All the mirrors in the house were removed in advance, except for one mirror in the bathroom, because it could not be removed. When her brother left for three seconds, Asil quickly stood up and decided to look at herself. After seeing her reflection, she fainted. She had a very strong hysteria. Asil said that no one should ever see such ugliness. But the restoration of Asil's face is still ahead of her. Before the plastic surgery, she will have several operations to reconstruct her face, restore the frame of her ears and nose. These are surgeries that require long preparation, skin augmentation, and a long recovery period of at least a year. Also, Asil has lost her hearing by 20%, which will definitely be corrected as well. The difficulty is that these operations are not performed in Kyrgyzstan. Such complex operations are carried out in Turkey or in other countries, and this requires very large funds. Mikhail Surer, a plastic surgeon from Turkey, offered to perform the surgery free of charge, that is to cover all the costs. At first, Kyrgyz doctors told him that Asil had only the tip of her nose, but when Surer saw the woman's face without bandages, he was extremely shocked. It turned out that plastic surgery alone would not do the trick in this case. First, a whole series of operations to restore organs was needed. The surgery to restore the ears and nose of Asel Nogoybayeva, who was mutilated by her ex-husband, will cost at least $45,000. Asel's sister, Diana Yelkin, who is actively engaged in disseminating information and raising funds for the operation, noted that all complex operations will be carried out in Turkey. Unfortunately, we have not raised even half of the needed $45,000. In addition, there are other expenses for accommodation, psychologist, rehabilitation, interpreter, medicines, and so on, Diana Yelkin said. I have more pictures of her without bandages. They are very scary. They are not for the faint of heart. I have been unable to come to my senses since yesterday, and I can't accept this face because there is nothing left of her ears and nose. Thank you to the doctors, they did everything they could. The main thing is that sepsis and gangrene did not go, said the sister of the victim. Diana Yelkin notes that if they cannot raise the necessary amount of money in the near future, she will publish her sister's face without bandages. Let the whole world see the true face of lawlessness, the true face of a victim of violence. Let every judge, policeman, deputy hang a picture of the mutilated Asil and look at her photo before making the necessary decisions, laws. If a year ago the judge had not given probation to this monster, all this would not have happened. 
the family and a seal were hoping for the law, for independent judges. Now we are making a challenge to everyone, a challenge to the judiciary of Kyrgyzstan. Diana regularly organized events to draw the attention of the Kyrgyz public to the problem of domestic violence against women. So far, fundraising has been held to help restore Asel Nogoibayeva's health. Asel's support, despite the terrible ordeal she endured, is an example of courage and determination in the fight against violence. Asel, who herself has yet to recover mentally and physically from 12 years of beatings, dreams of opening a foundation to help women who have also been abused like herself. After being abused, you can't stop helping others. To conclude the story, the real ugliness that no one should see is not a seal's face at all, but the essence of her ex-husband. Even with fatigue and pain in her eyes, one can see that a seal is a very feminine, gentle, and beautiful woman. It does not matter how her face looks now. She is a beautiful woman, because her soul and heart are beautiful. I would like to appeal to all women. Never tolerate and do not expect your chosen one to change, run away, and never come back. All nations have tyrants. Thanks for watching guys, subscribe to my channel, there are many shocking stories ahead of you.